thank you for joining with me for Growth Point today. And I'm always excited to talk about how to walk in the paths of wisdom and righteousness. And that's what Proverbs is all about. And uh, I am so thankful that we can get this practical guidance together. And I pray that uh, something that you hear today will uh, just be helpful to you on your journey with the Lord. If you'd like to take the Bible with you, we're going to turn to Proverbs 6, and we're going to be reading down through verse 15 today. And uh, Proverbs 6, verse 1 says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou strick, hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go, humble thyself, and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which, having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? A little folding of the hands, a, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, and suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Wow, that word calamity and calamity coming suddenly, that's a foreboding statement. And I want to speak to you today about how to avoid calamity, because it's just around the corner when you disregard the word of God. Uh, this word calamity speaks of disaster uh, befalling an individual or even a country, and uh, we see calamity all around us today. And, and I'm going to tell you that uh, these situations in our country, in our public schools, colleges, uh, in the lives of certain families, these don't happen just in an instant. Normally, there are a series of choices, hardening of hearts towards the things of God that bring us to calamity. Uh, in the book of Proverbs, we know the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And uh, we live in a country that's saying, no God. It's just constantly a refrain um, and uh, turning towards secularism, humanism, turning towards uh, atheism. And as the country continues to say no to God, calamitous events are going to unfold. And those that have uh, a heart to follow after God and his word will avoid that calamity. Well, how do we avoid calamity? Let's learn some truths from Proverbs 6 today. First of all, we want to avoid wrong relationships. And the Bible speaks here about uh, becoming surety for a friend, uh, entering into relationships uh, which regard credit or involve uh, lending, entering into relationships that uh, perhaps at times are even an unequal yoke, which the New Testament definitely warns us against that. A good friendship can end quickly through surety uh, or through uh, business dealings. And I've seen this in churches over the years that people come into the church and think, well, he's a Christian, I'm a Christian. I can, I can lend him $5,000, I'll do it at cheap interest and he'll be good for it. And they're not. I always tell people, uh, make sure that you're checking with your pastor or some longtime member before you just lend or borrow uh, in a relationship just based upon the fact they seem like a good guy. Uh, don't ruin a good friendship through borrowing or selling. Um, it's normally better to give. If you have the capacity just to give someone that engine or that camera rather than selling something that's used, for example, that may break, uh, then endeavor to give when you can. But uh, be careful about business relationships with even friends, even good Christians that could go south and be willing going into the relationship to take a loss if need be. And if you can't take the loss, uh, then be careful about becoming surety or selling something to a friend. In addition to friends, I think the same rules apply many times to strangers. It's slightly different, 
Uh, but uh, God says uh, we can deliver ourselves from uh, these difficulties uh, if we uh, go to a friend and if we humble ourselves and make things right. But then it says in verse 4, Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter. And here we see some of the calamity that takes place in culture and in business, uh, dealing, with, dealing with debt, dealing again with business relationships. Uh, we need to be careful in the way that we conduct ourselves. And God's admonishing us here uh, that uh, we need to be careful not to overindulge in rest or laziness. Uh, I love this verse, go to the ant thou sluggard. Uh, sometimes in jest, I'll say that to uh, one of my brothers if they're uh, behind on a project or something and neither one are lazy. But the point of it is, is that there's an admonition to all of us uh, listen, we're, we're not to be uh, sluggards. We're, look at the ant. And I remember years ago being in Africa and seeing this humongous anthill. It must have been 15 feet tall. In fact, it was so tall, I had no idea what it was, just this cone-shaped thing. And, um, and the folks that I was with said, that's actually an anthill. And they kicked the side of it. These humongous ants started swirling all around. And they, they work continuously, 24-7, uh, creating... Uh, their their environment, bringing their food and so forth. And God says, you know, rather than lose your testimony with the world with sluggardliness, then find yourself being faithful in work and consider the ant thou sluggard and consider her ways and be wise. And notice it says, which having no guide, overseer or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. I believe that uh, every one of us should have that spirit. Some, the world calls it being a self-starter. The Bible calls it being spirit-led. Uh, letting the Lord lead you into work, savings, uh, into accomplishing goals for Him and giving Him the glory. And so uh, if you're going to avoid calamity, you're going to avoid debt, you're going to avoid relationships that bring bitterness. And secondly, you're going to be someone who is working with integrity uh, who is a self-starter to get things done and to keep commitments. Uh, Proverbs 26.3 says, For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. And when you walk this path of truth, you're going to guard your testimony along the way. The Bible then says uh, these words, uh, How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When, thou, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy want as an armed man. Um, we learn here that this matter of creating excuses, rationalization must be overcome if we're going to avoid calamity. Uh, people that say, well, I was going to get around to paying that. I was going to get around to fixing that. I was going to get around to spending time with my children. All of those uh, excuses that we can generate ultimately bring us to calamity because we never really fulfilled our God-given responsibility. And so uh, the Bible then uh, in this passage says in verse 12, A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teaches with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He sows discord. Now I want you to follow the progression. First you have this admonition uh, to avoid debt. And secondly, this admonition to, to work and to consider the ant and, and not to make excuses. Thirdly, we see this uh, character traits uh, as they're connected because the third realm of admonitions is along the line of uh, avoiding uh, this place that people often come to with a froward mouth and sowing discord. Uh, someone that isn't responsible in business, someone that isn't faithful in their work, that gets into debt, they're always going to have something to say about those who are successful, those who are blessed. They're going to have a heart that is scornful. They'll devise mischief continually. It's drama queen. It's it's drama, drama, drama. And, and finally, the calamity hits them. And so what an amazing challenge because verse 15 says, therefore shall his calamity come suddenly Suddenly he shall be broken without remedy. Why? Because he began with some bad decisions, often not 
uh, formed in council. Uh, sometimes that surety leads to debt or sometimes uh, the relationships of buying and selling lead to misunderstandings. And that's followed by many times a period of laziness and justification for a lack of work, followed by a lot of talk and no action, and suddenly calamity comes. And what a great portion here for us. Seek wisdom in your business dealing. Seek counsel. Uh, be careful uh, to maintain a schedule. We often tell students at West Coast Baptist College that they should work at the beginning of the semester on getting a job if they need a job. They should work as hard at getting the job as they will work when they get the job. Don't be like the uh, sluggard who just makes excuses and folds his arms. And, and then finally, don't be that excuse maker, that scorner, that one that's always making a reason, saying something negative about others that are doing well. Because if that becomes your pattern, calamity will become your end. And I pray that we'll avoid calamity and maintain amazing testimony for Christ today. And I hope that you've been blessed as we've had this time in the Growth Point study here in the book of Proverbs. Let's, get, let's keep walking in wisdom today. God bless you.